Jim Joyce, and you're on time, my friend, which is awesome. You know, you you had a streak, then you broke it. Now we're gonna get you streaked again. <laughs> I'm 99%, 99% on time. I think. You know. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll, I... we'll we'll have to do the math. Um, which, by the way, Maybe so 97%. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll do the math for the next one. I'll try to remember it. But um, <laughs> we, so, but we 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 have. Uh, I just checked. Uh, this will be ninety first episode that we upload uh, to YouTube slash podcast. So wow, ninety one. So ninety one. Man, number is it the number one digital health COVID started podcast for longevity. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. And yes, I mean, <laughs> right. you know how it's like, you, you see these things like, you know, best falafel in, you know, whatever. Right. And it's probably like on right. that block, right? right? Uh, or whatever. Right, so. right. Best pizza in <laughs> the uh, corner of exa- Exactly. <laughs> um, I, it's funny. I mean, we caught up the, this Monday briefly. Um, I don't even know what's going on in the world. Like, it's just been like, boom, 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 boom crazy yeah i think a lot of people are feel i think a lot of people like i know now that i'm you know in the public markets i feel a lot of people are kind of happy to get january behind them you know like so january for the public markets has been a kind of a roller coaster not all bad not all good i know a lot of the um you know a lot of so i think that's that's the kind of the feeling it's like we kind of got through the year we kind of tucked through you know the next variant here hopefully the world's starting to open up but kind of clumsy you know, war yep. starting, you know, that's, that's why I feel like a lot going on. <laughs> it's, it's, so with it's, that. um, <laughs> it's so February, February 2nd already. I just thought we hit February 1st yesterday and, uh, that was yep. Chinese, Ch- Chinese new year, the year of the tiger. Um, ha- happy so Chinese new year, ha- happy Chinese new year to those who celebrate it. Um, Anyway, we have an awesome guest uh, who I've met years ago. I think it was actually at JPM, um, but uh, Startup okay. Health Festival. Um, so uh, it's uh, Thomas Tang. We're, we're, we're looking forward to it. And um, I think we, we canceled or moved Tom around uh, a couple of times already. Welcome, Hi. Tom. Hey, Eugene. Hey. How are you? Hey Thomas, nice to meet you. Meet you Jim, as well, Jim, Tom, Tom, Jim, and and by the way, I, I've always kind of you know Thomas, Tom. What, what's your preference? I know Tom is fine. Thomas, okay. Fine. All right, hey, all right. What did your What did your mom call you growing up? Oh, uh, Tatwa. <laughs> Tatwa. Okay, there you go. Okay, got it. <laughs> she she didn't speak a word of English, so she called me by my Chinese name. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Like my, you know, cause I have a, I have a, a gym and it, you know, I'm Jim or James or Jimmy, you know, so depending on, you know, how you know me. <laughs> so you don't want to know what my mom called me. My mom had a nickname for me. It was like crybaby <laughs> in, 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 in Chinese. Was she this right? Is go- this is going into the notes. <laughs> you know, you know who, who, whoever, whoever cried the, made the most noise, got the most food, right? So. <laughs> Love it. Isn't that still the same? You know, whether you talk about politics, whoever squeak, you know, or corporate politics, whoever squeaky screams wheel. out. Yeah, squeaky, exactly. Squeaky wheel gets what they want. Yeah, <laughs> it works in some. It works sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, listen, thanks for being flexible. I know we were trying to get you in still in the old year, but um, yeah, you know, we, we got you here, and it's and it's crazy because we were just saying before we let you in, uh, you know, happy Chinese New Year. You're the tiger, so um, thank you. Was... It's, it's so appropriate. What a what a what is auspicious, uh, be, you know, beginning of the lunar uh, calendar year. So thank you for having me on the first day of the new year. Exactly, um, exactly. Big happy new year. And, um, you know, I was just telling Jim as we were letting in, uh, I think you and I met, I believe it was like Startup Health Festival at some point in time, you know, Unity and team, right? And um, are you a Startup Health company, by the way? Transformer? Yeah, yeah. We've, been, we've been around yeah. for since, since uh, yeah, since the last five years, since we've been around, we've been part of Startup Health. Well, so they're, before they're we get to your guys. current thing. Amazing. Yeah. Before we get to your current thing, um, for the millions of viewers and listeners that we have, um, tell us who Tom is, kind of a little bit of the background, you know, you can go professional, you can go personal, 
you can go real deep and personal since we're going to talk about ther <laughs> therapy, but can, that's up to you. You can scoat across this. You can, you can fly across the surface. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, thanks. Thanks a lot for having me here. And uh, Eugene, I've been, you know, we've known each other for, I don't know how long I've, I've met you when I was in my Merck days, I think. Yeah. Uh, right. So it's that's been right. a while since we've known each other and, and I follow your career and you follow my career. And, and it's just amazing how we kind of reinvent ourselves um, every few years. Uh, so a little bit of my background. Hair. I'm actually, <laughs> uh, you did have a little bit more hair when I first met you. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, so, did, so did I. And I had less and I had less pounds also. Um, I, I'm an internist by training, saw patients for um, 15 years of my life. Um, was always in in positions where I try to uh, impact more um, in terms of the health system. So ran a fairly qualified health center, which is like a community clinic for Asian immigrants in Chinatown, New York, um, and then ended up doing policy work and was a congressional staffer for the Ways and Means Committee. Wow. And was part of the team that drafted parts of the ACA and, and then shifted over to the Obama administration. Wow. Um, I did not at, know that. Worked at, worked at ONC uh, in help rolling out aspects of the, the EMR program for providers and, and, and hospitals and helping with that program. And then got... Uh, uh, drafted by the governor of Hawaii to do some Medicaid reform for the Hawaii, and then, and then found, ended up at Merck Pharmaceuticals with Sachin Jane. Uh, oh and yeah. Then my last gig is, is this gig is this gig Valera, and started that about five years ago when when I met my co-founder Ofer Sharon at Merck. Okay, and and were you in New Jersey at White House Station or New York or? Where I, I was I was um, originally in the Longwood office in Boston, and then okay. ultimately ended up in New Jersey. Yeah, at Mark. I, I, I wanna okay. I want I wanna backtrack to Hawaii. So personally, I've never <laughs> me been, too. I've never been. I, I just like you know. Can, can we just go there for like at least mentally for? And for how do you a bit? get drafted? Oh. How do you get drafted? I, I can't. I Hawaii. can't believe that you've never been out of all people, Eugene. Like you're calling in from Barcelona or Barcelona, and, uh, and 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 I can't believe you've never been to Hawaii. Um, it's it's like paradise, man. It's like you know, it's it's totally different world. You, when you're in a little island with one one point two people, 1.4 million people, you're, you're, you're like in this cocoon. And, right. and um, it's really super interesting. Like they kind of had their health care, their own healthcare reform like 20 years ago. Okay. And they like ensure like every single uh, resident of that state has access to, to health insurance. Wow. Um, so it's, it's a super interesting model there. Um, and they're, they're very, very progressive in terms of making sure that um, healthcare is a, is, is a right and has, you know, everyone has access. But it's, it's, you know, I got there with business suits and shirts and ties the first day. Right. And people said, you got to get rid of that stuff. Like, <laughs> yep. people are going to laugh at you and say, you can't, you, you're not going to fit in. So I had to go to the, you know, I had to go to the store and get like seven Hawaii shirts, Hawaiian shirts. Like, and, 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 and shorts then, and, then and flip-flops, of course, right? Right, right. And then I had to learn how to talk story. Like they start off with every single meeting with just like, just talking stories for about okay. 10 minutes and sharing stories, like non-work stories. It's, it's, it's quite right. the culture of, of, like you know sharing island. love and island life yes yeah like that you could you'd you'd fit well in ireland I, i'm calling from dublin ireland here you'd fit well in here we wow. start all the stories you know getting an irish person on subject you know it's, it's kind of a whole art <laughs> jim by the way i listened to your your interview with uh, bobby and i like how you described yourself as a reverse immigrant right kind of something <laughs> 
not Irish Amer- yeah, the, American, uh, American Irish, not Irish. American. Yeah, I'm American Irish instead of Irish yeah. American. I emigrated to Ireland versus the other way. <laughs> yeah. I, I Wait, so now why would you leave Hawaii? I mean, that's I don't want to bury the lead here. Why would you leave Hawaii? <laughs> um, you know, I, it was time. It was time like to kind of do something else. I, I spent three years in the federal government and then one year in the state government. Okay. Four, four years of my life given to like civil service and Right. And then when I was offered the position at Merck, it was like something I couldn't say no to, to kind of help with their innovation team globally. Okay. Uh, so that was, it was a really appealing, attractive offer for Merck. Did you work with our buddy? Did you work with our buddy, Bill Toronto? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I worked okay. with Bill. I worked uh, with Sasha and Jane and Aman Bandari, you know, uh, hmm. Ar- Arnab uh, Chatterjee, like, you know, it was a great it was a great team uh actually they're all government former government folks who went okay to work. yeah i mean kind of kind of makes sense i always describe when i was a bear that like bears kind of like a government <laughs> Just, <laughs> like, i mean every company has its own dna at any corporate right but right. uh but it's like you know it's just uh, uh but anyway i'll, I'll, right. I'll pause on that <laughs> <laughs> So how, how so let's was get it into, actually going let's into get to work with guys that you know, like people that you know and people that you have like a, you know, a vibe with and, and you sync with them and, and, and you know what you're getting into. And that's really the best thing about like, you know, working with colleagues that you respect, that you trust and you, you know, understand their vision of how to like move forward, move the agenda forward. So that's the best piece. One of the things I think about just, I, and I, we're going to unpack your background a little bit, but but this idea that you were involved in such a, a you know, such a monumental piece of legislation in the U.S. government. Like, I, I think, like, how does that, like, and I, you know, we'll get into what your company does now, but like, how does that shape your perspective? That's like, okay, we're actually, you know, you were actually part of this team and, you know, you changed how healthcare was delivered in the U.S. in a, like a meaningful way. Does that, you know, does that, that as it, and then now as an entrepreneur, does that mess with your psyche that you feel like, oh, let's just change the government or, or you say, I'll never do it again? No, I, I, I am, I count my blessings every single waking moment to be part of that process. I, you know, I, I, I stepped on some piece of shit, I guess, for good luck. I, I don't know. It was pretty, it was pretty amazing. I think you you can see some of those folks from that from that phase, like Farzad's doing his thing, Farzad yeah. Mastashari's doing his thing with Alidate. Um, you know, Mandy Cohen was the Secretary of Health in in North Carolina. Um, Sabelle, who I work with, Sabelle Bjorglund, she's now working um, for the diabetes prevention uh, company. Like every single person that I interact or met through that phase of my life are just doing fantastic, great things. And right. it's, it's amazing to see everyone's journey to see and to see like the people who were part of that process is now continuing the impact, like, their impact through private sector work. Some right. of them have actually gone back to government Okay. Um, and are working for the current administration. But it's right. just so super interesting to see the connectedness of this you know, web of people and the impact they've had 15 years ago and now the impact that like, they're having now. Like, for example, like Farzad, like he's built yep. this amazing company that's valued over whatever, two, three billion dollars already. Wow. Yeah. And, and maybe... I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, right? Because as you're sort of developing, it's also developing from scratch to a certain extent, right? And so this transition, as you met uh, your partner, right, Offer, um, was it like shit going into entrepreneurship world or was it like a common, like, okay, no problem, let's go, right? Like, was there hesitation? <laughs> because uh, we, you go from Fed, state, you know, big corporate, right? Um, and then to now in the first days, probably doing everything yourself, right? Switching hats. Right. And- oh my God. It was, it's, I would say this is probably the hardest job of my life right now. This, I mean, this is the hardest job I've ever encountered in my entire life. It's like, 
you know, doing policy work and being in meetings in large enterprise, you're not personally responsible for the, 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 you know, yeah. salaries and, 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 and making a living. And, and we right. have, we have a sizable amount of employees now and we we're you know we're 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 pretty we're pretty you know in terms of compared to startups like we're pretty big now we have close to 400 providers wow um and then the corporate staff it's it's uh I remember we're reaching uh you know we're, we're slightly less than 100 people but you know wow. we're 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 almost in uh, 10 states now. Wow. Um, and so we're getting to a certain level where, yeah, like this is like real shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, well, and in the beginning, it was scary in the beginning. Like, okay, you know, you, I think you can like think about, well, this is, th this journey has been extremely positive but in the beginning it's like you don't know if you're going to survive the, you know the next month or the next day or in, right. in the beginning it's it's touch and go and how much of that did you get to eugene's point how much when you were making that decision to jump from merck and did you get a lot of that did you think you get or did oh you, i was or, or i was constantly just like reevaluating, reassessing and thinking <laughs> did, did I, what what the hell what the hell did i do what kind of decision did i make and i mean i'm i am not a 20 something year old kid right. so what am i doing so this is like yeah it was like one of the biggest decisions and i would constantly talk to ofer like oh, am i really making the right decision right right and, and especially, especially in question, question yourself you start to question yourself Especially in your role at Merck, I mean, uh, you know, working with and talking to lots of entrepreneurs and right, I mean, you you knew to a certain extent what uh, what delivery. yeah, <laughs> listen, it, this is the this is meticulously unproduced. I saw you know there's a guy walking behind you. Who cares? It's fine. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we're we're all human beings. We need to eat lunch, you know. Um, <laughs> But um, where was I going with this? Uh, you know, obviously you you had some sense kind of in a third party way, um, entrepreneurs looking for funding, championing, you know, you need a champion inside. And then it kind of hits you as a kind of like a brick wall, right? The first uh, like, oh, shit, three months, six month runway, whatever runway. <laughs> um, but um, right. I, I yeah, no, it's wild. I mean, like Eugene, Eugene and I, you had a question, Eugene and I, you know, we've obviously done it before, but I feel like, like I'm kind of an adrenaline junkie, you know, so, so that's my, you know, meaning, meaning this idea of kind of setting something up and going after it. But, you know, and I, and I think of, there's a lot of people and I think about going into startups and you're saying, you know, you, you gotta be, and, and you know, startups are so interesting nowadays, even you're, you're quoting the size of your company while, you know, funding has just changed so fundamentally that I'm kind of wondering in my head is, is it, is it different now for founders because, you know, there is more money available. So that kind of, you know, changes the game in a different way. So versus someone who's going to claw it out, you know, where there is no money <laughs> where you're a constant state. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I certainly think it's, it's, I, I wouldn't say it's easier or harder now, but I think, I think there are more options right. out there. And I think there's a lot of people who can give advice to a young entrepreneur right now these days compared to like five years ago even right you know, like six years ago it, it was just not as ubiquitous with like this whole process and right i think they're they're the, even like working remotely like you know now there's so many tools for managing a team that's so remote oh yeah right. versus five years ago like slack wasn't around five years ago and so right so i think it's certainly in some ways you know there are more options of of not just capital, but advice and and experiences and know how. I think it. I think somewhat in some ways, it's it's both easier and harder now because at the same time there are more people doing it and there's more competition and there's more, you know, the the, the stakes the, are higher. 
right? The yep. six of her and, the, and the, those good ideas. It could have been like, you know, there's a hundred good ideas now as opposed to like, you know, <laughs> 20 good ideas. And so the competition is is harder to get the funding. Right, right. And and so so just for the viewers that don't know Valara Health, kind of, you know, how what you know what do you guys do? How you describe right. it? Where are you at? So so we to put it simply, we are a comprehensive uh, telemental health service model that treats kids to adults and sees mild, moderate, and severe individuals. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, 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 we see both people with depression and also we see the people with schizophrenia and bipolar disorders. Okay. That's, that's the huge differentiator is that not a whole lot of companies out there, there could be a hundred mental health companies out there, but not a whole lot would see the severe, the severe, the schizophrenics and the, and the bipolars. Okay. And then, and then the comprehensive nature that we see both kids and adults right. is is uh, is often very appealing to to our partners. And and right. how did you guys? I mean, you know, five six years ago, I don't know when I don't remember when you guys actually started, but you met offer. Like, what was some of those discussions, conversations? Like, take us a little bit back on kind of the mm -hmm. foundational components, because now you know, mental health is on a tip of everybody's tongue. I think we had a guest, Acacia, she referred to mental uh, from Hapo, well, she was at Hapify, she moved on now. Um, you know, she said something like mental health, it's like all these companies, it's like hunger games of mental health, right? It's like <laughs> there's so many of them um, um, go going on now. So rewind back because, you know, five, six years ago, the discussions with Offer, what was the principle of it and, and the big idea? And Yeah, I think, um... He had done a couple startups and he kind of pushed me and thinking out loud, like what, what do I really want to do in life? And, and he kind of knew and that deep down, I wanted things to move faster than it would in a large corporate enterprise in terms of, you know, moving the speed of progress and the speed of decision-making and, uh, and, I, and we started chatting and we went through this whole process of like, okay, at that time, population health was a big thing and diabetes prevention was a big thing and data analytics. But at that time, five years ago, six years ago, no one was touching mental health. Right. Um, and so there were very, very few companies out there at that time, like Quartet was one of the early ones. Yep. Um, but we didn't like to maybe tell it, you know, Teladoc was another early one. Right. But but we were just thinking how technology could actually change and make things much more efficient in both um, chatting, uh, encrypted chat, uh, televideo services. Like we were talking about televideo like five years ago, be way before right the up. epidemic. And then we were talking about how, you know, how can we predict using uh, digital phenotypes? How can we predict... Um, uh, a, a patient's condition and and predict relapse and that was really the the nature of those discussions and then and then what kind of a company can we because I'm I'm not a psychiatrist he's not a psychiatrist and both of us are internists but we really um, really kind of nailed down like an area that was ripe for innovations right and, where, and how did you come up with this that kind of that spectrum that on the mental health spectrum to go after the you know what was the kind of the the moment that you said, right. hey, we, we want to go on the severe end. All right. So that was more recent. That was like roughly around okay. two, two years ago. Um, okay. So we developed the software, we developed the platform, we started licensing the platform to hospitals to start using it. And we were learning from those SaaS projects. We didn't mm -hmm. have the service back then. We right. only, we only include, we only started the service in 2020, 2020. Okay. And it was then that we kind of really, it was, it was, it was kind of simple. It was just basically understanding where the need is and right. really understanding, you know, what, where was the most need, where was the low hanging fruit yeah. and, and having a comprehensive model was, was very uh, natural for me in terms of that. And, it was a part of my DNA when I was taking care of immigrants in Chinatown and taking care of um, 
really, you know, doing my residency in the South Bronx and then okay. and then working in down in downtown Manhattan. Were you in Manhattan. Albert Einstein or where, where? I was at I was at Montefiore. Okay. Okay. Got and it. really seeing the the biggest impact to to you know patients who normally would not otherwise access services. Like, and, and there's what's a, there's what's a ton the of trick? companies catering to the mile to the worry well. Like right. they don't need another yet another mental health company, right? They need they need services. I mean, they they don't they have all the all these other companies serving them. They don't right. need another startup to go into that sector. Right, right. And what's the trick? What's when you think about this? If you kind of summarize, like when you're dealing with that schizophrenic or bipolar, like what's the what have you learned? Or what's kind of the takeaway from treating that population? You need to have really super high quality protocols, um, very well defined protocols, uh, and making sure um, that patients have good outcomes. And two is um, having a, a stable workforce. Okay. Uh, that these are not, you know, people who are, are coming in for two hours a week, three hours a week, you know, they're not gig workers. Right. Um, and, and, and three is having people dedicated and interested in working with this population. Not right. everyone's interested in working with this population. Right. right. Interestingly, I mean, you talk about, I mean, the, there's a war on talent, kind of a great resignation, right. And whether you're a practitioner with your own office, um, and, and I think, again, back to this kind of hunger game of mental health, I agree with you that, you know, there's uh, probably, I mean, I don't know of many companies that are servicing that population, but still, right, like, um, there's such a demand for, you know, therapists, psychotherapists, psychiatrists, psychologists, right, uh, just, um, how do you guys handle that? I mean, you mentioned, you know, 400 proprietors, right, uh, or, or growing to that. So just kind of, what, what's, what's the approach or... I'm, I'm, it's 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 creating a culture of community. It's creating a culture of trust, um, and having uh, great feedback from the from our employees that the company cares about them, and that um, we look after their interests. Um, you know, it's it's really the provider experience and making sure that they they know that they're cared for and mm -hmm. we look after their interests and, and, and they can, you know, it's not just purely about salaries. I mean, that's important. Don't get me wrong. The numbers okay. are important, but on top of the, the paying market rate, what's, what else can you get? What am I right. going to get out of the comp from working for Valera? Right. And those are the things that we kind of, you know, create like that provider experience for them, whether right. it's just, supervision, whether it's continuing education, whether it's professional growth opportunities. I, I just uh, remembered, I mean, you mentioned also like a hundred people. So I'm assuming you, you guys are, I, I remember seeing you, I think it was pre-pandemic. Um, I think right pre-pandemic, if I'm not mistaken, at the, the WeWork in Brooklyn, right? So I assume that you guys moved on from there or maybe part part we have, of we have, you have we have we 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 are now remote i mean most of us are remote yeah got it and who is the lunch person behind you was that the <laughs> oh uh, <laughs> i'm actually working from home and, <laughs> and, and and he and he and he's my partner getting my 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 lunch awesome so, awesome 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 so when you think like I, the question I, I was dying to ask you from the beginning when I was hearing about your space was San Francisco, you know, during the pandemic, you know, like somewhere like Austin, Los, you know, Los Angeles, these massive populations of homeless people with obvious mental health disorders. Like if, if we made Valara available to all that population, what would happen? Um. I think it would decrease homelessness. It would decrease, uh, look, I, I don't think we're the panacea for everything, but I think there are a lot of issues 
um, in terms of institutional mental health care not being accessible and available. Um, and I think just even our kids, like our, the kids right now are just the biggest vulnerable group that's suffering from this pandemic. I mean, we, we're hearing it over and over again is um, the, the, you know, go to school for three days, go to school for two days, don't go to school. And, and, and then the parents have been to deal with like the whole family dynamic has been like completely traumatized in terms of like how do how do parents deal with their kids? How do kids deal with their parents? How do kids socialize? They've lost three years, two and yeah. a half years of their lives. And they're the most critical years where they're learning socialization skills mm -hmm. and they're learning how to interact with their friends. Like they don't know <laughs> what's what's up, down, you know, left, right, and what's right or wrong. And I think we're gonna suffer and where where we will suffer as a society in terms of um, having kids learning coping skills right. and learning resiliency um, over the next two, three, four, five years. It's kind of like, like, it's not to make light of it, but like, you know, when you, they're saying like, you know, people bringing their dogs to the park for the first time after years and the dogs are all kind of attacking other dogs, you know, right. in the park, you know, because they don't know how to socialize, you know, they're, they're right. kind and, of cooped and, up. And so not, I mean, so not to, put it you know make light of the situation of those the 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 horrific violent crimes that are that are happening um but yeah i mean it's 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 a worrisome you know i think we will have a mental health crisis over the next three four years hopefully we get Lara out there we get some we get some support so hopefully we get that we go the other way <laughs> Uh, but, but by the way, just I, I not not to go completely backwards here. I'm just kind of trying to remember. Uh, it was uh, Al Alex Fair that kind of uh, pinged um, us in the group, right? So met met started folks to say, "Hey, you should really have Tom." And I'm like, "Tom, yes." Sorry, I'm, I'm just going backwards. Not, and I'm trying to lighten up the mood a little bit. I mean, we're supposed to have. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're shot of digital health. We, we got, we yeah. got, we, we're shot of digital health, so we need to. You know. I'm, I'm sure Alex is okay with me saying this, and but I was actually Alex's doctor for the longest time. Ah, as an yeah. internist, as an internist. I okay. an internist. got, okay. gotcha. I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to know his internals. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we don't have to kind of, we don't have GDPR issues or whatever. <laughs> um. So I don't know, Jim. I uh, I mean, I we can keep digging deeper. Maybe one more question before you know Jim's famous question. You know, coming from kind of again federal, state, large corporate, what was kind of like one of the biggest like holy crap, wasn't expecting this moments in the entrepreneurial world. Uh, there's so many, right? <laughs> yeah i can't even i can't i can't even like i i think is the ability to be tenacious when people slam the door on your face and say you're not too interested. early not interested you don't have a great idea yeah, yeah. And it's like, now I can say, beep, beep, <laughs> yeah. you know, I can say, I can say those words, which can't be said publicly. And it's like, okay, here we are. We're growing, right. we're growing by leaps and bounds. And, right. and it's that, it's, it's that willingness to just hang on and to believe in yourself that you don't get that from med school you don't get that from any other right. you, you get it you get it from the school of hard knocks right, <laughs> yes, right, right, exactly. right. exactly like you have to believe in yourself you need to believe in your vision and you have to be tenacious and you can't give up J jim so i beyond... think my yeah i think my question kind of well let's see let's see yeah. uh, go, go for so it so beyond beyond tenacity beyond tenacity um, 
just run through a mental drill with me. And you're, you're, you're sitting there, you're giving advice to a young former internist that had been steeped in government and pharmaceutical work for years. Um, and you're sitting at the cusp of uh, the Chinese new year <laughs> and you're giving this young, this young, uh, this young entrepreneur advice and they've just left their big permanent pensionable job inside pharma to start a new company. Um, and it's going to be tackling, you know, big, big healthcare problems and, you know, transforming the U S healthcare system. But in you're looking at this, what, what advice would you give that young entrepreneur? Besides tenacity, I would say do it now before you turn 40. <laughs> 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 take, take the risk now take the risk now uh, while you're still young so you don't have to worry about like i think as we age we tend to be more and more conservative in our decision making process mm. and the young the the young are reckless like <laughs> and, and, but that recklessness sometimes you know, you require that, like, you know, forging ahead uh, with that type of, you know, quick decision making process and fail a couple times and pick yourself yeah. up and fail and pick yourself up. And then, you know, that's how you get there. And I think the older you get, there's less of a appetite for failing. Mm. And, I, and I think we build all these different ego stuff and around our head and then we worry about what other people think about us and it's harder to be a startup guy when you're like 40 50 right right talking to I mean, we're, we're, yeah <laughs> <laughs> that yeah i was you know I, I my wife always said i was i was gifted with always acting like a child <laughs> so that's my same, superpower same 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 <laughs> Um, well, listen, Tom, it was an awesome pleasure here. Um, you know, we'll, we'll absolutely keep in touch on, and, and keep an eye on, on the journey. Uh, I think you're tackling some really important issues here. So thank you for making time. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tommy. The boy, right. the boy who and, cried the loudest. Yes, and, and, that's right. <laughs> and I was going to say, the for all the laughed. viewers, go ahead, go ahead. There was a delay. The, the boy, the, I was just asking the boy who cried last. No, the loudest. Oh, the, loudest. loudest. <laughs> the loudest. Yeah. And to all the listeners and viewers, subscribe, pass it on, and uh, see you next week.